Hello everyone, Chris here from Spoon Graphics, back with another video tutorial. Now last week I received a great tutorial suggestion on Twitter from uh, Daniel Alessandro, who asked if I could create a guide based on the metal text effect from the title artwork of the upcoming movie, Fantastic Beasts. It's a really nice shiny metal, almost chrome-like effect with a mix of water droplets, lens flares and some really cool custom type that adds sharp scales to depict the scary fantasy beasts that the movie is based around. So I got to work and played around in Photoshop to create something similar. Now given the uh, scaly dragon-like theme, I came up with this artwork based on the concept of Saint George and the Dragon, so I could try out that kind of type customization for myself. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this entire concept from scratch, so I'll post up some kind of uh, timestamp for anyone who wants to skip ahead to creating the actual metal effect. This tutorial follows on nicely from last time, where I showed you how to create a rad 80s style chrome logo. So hop in your time machine once again, and we'll head back to the middle ages for this one. Now this full piece could certainly be created entirely in Photoshop, but if you've got Illustrator available you might as well use it to make life easier for yourself. If this was a real world project you would definitely want to create the basic branding like this in vector format anyway. Open up Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. Grab the type tool and begin laying out the words of your title or logo. I'm using the awesome free font called Sinzel, which has a historic Roman style to it. Create individual text elements for each word or pair of words so you can rearrange them into a nice composition. Little tricks like lining up and scaling each element to match the other words helps keep the overall design balanced. Now onto the type customization. To make the text easier to work with, select all the elements, then right click and select create outlines. There's a great opportunity to add a cross in the centre of the letter O in George to depict the St George's cross. Draw a thin rectangle with the black fill and no stroke, then copy and paste in front a duplicate. Rotate this duplicate by 90 degrees, then select them both and hit the Unite button from the Pathfinder panel to merge them into one shape. Click the word George and select Ungroup from the right click menu, which will allow you to select just the letter O. Add the cross to the selection, then give the letter an extra click to make it the key object. Use the Align panel to centre the shapes up both horizontally and vertically, followed by the Unite Pathfinder button to blend them all together. In the newer versions of Illustrator there's some cool widgets that allow you to round off the corners. Use the Direct Selection tool to shift click all the points around the cross, then subtly adjust the corner radius. Elsewhere on the artboard draw a small circle. Use the Direct Selection tool to drag out the leftmost point, then select the Pen tool and hold the Alt key while clicking the point to remove the bezier handles and make a sharp point. Click the New icon at the bottom of the Brushes panel and select New Art Brush. Make sure the flow goes in the right direction from thick to thin. Draw another circle, then select and delete the top and left points to leave a quarter circle. Remove the fill, then apply the newly created brush. Go to Objects and Expand Appearance to convert this stroke into a solid shape. Select the Rotate tool and hold the Alt key while clicking a pivot point to the left of the shape. In the Options menu enter 10 degrees and hit the Copy button. Press the shortcut for Transform again which is Command and D to repeat the effect to form a series of aligned shapes. Select the first copy and scale it down by a small amount. Select the next shape and press Command and D twice to scale it down twice as much. Repeat the process with the next one, except to press Command and D an extra time so the shapes incrementally reduce in size. Select all the shapes and group them together so they can be all selected and moved at the same time. Then begin scaling and rotating them to fit within the counter, which is the typographer's term for the whole of the letter D. Rotate and align the shapes enough so that the angle of the curves matches up exactly to create a smooth transition. Hold the Alt key and drag a copy of the shapes, then scale, rotate and position them somewhere within the next letter. To mix things up, go to Object, Transform and Reflect to flip the shapes so they can be used on the opposite side of other letters. Keep creating copies and positioning these scaly shapes somewhere within every remaining letter of the word Dragon. Now the leg of the letter R also gives us a great opportunity to turn it into a spiky dragon's tail. Select the brush tool and draw a long flowing path with a few bends. Use the direct selection tool to tweak the points and bezier handles to produce a smooth path. With the direct selection tool still active, select and delete the points that make up the shape of the letter R's leg so it can be replaced with the new brush stroke. Bump up the stroke size to roughly match the weight of the font, then position it roughly in place and tweak the points of the path. 
Select the pen tool and hover over the open point within the letter R shape. You'll see a little circular icon which means the path will be extended. Use this to draw a new shape that blends in with the end of the brush stroke. Make any necessary tweaks with the direct selection tool to ensure everything transitions smoothly. Then go to objects and expand appearance to permanently convert the brush stroke into a shape. Continue with the brush tool to draw a series of spines down the tail. The positioning doesn't have to be perfect just yet, just plot a few smooth short paths. You can head back and zoom in to position each of the spine shapes more accurately so they blend smoothly into the tail outline. The overall logo for St George and the Dragon looks pretty cool with the type customization, but it's about time we actually got to the topic of creating a metal effect in this tutorial. Create a new document in Adobe Photoshop. I'm using the size of 2000 by 1300 pixels. Fill the background with black using the shortcut Alt and Backspace. Open up a cloud or a smoke image, like the one I found from Unsplash.com. Press Command and A to select all, Command and C to copy, then switch to the main working document and press Command and V to paste. Scale, rotate and position the image to fill the background, then press Command, Shift and U to desaturate it. Change the blending mode to linear light to boost the contrast against the black background, then reduce the opacity to around 30%. Create a new layer and fill it with black. Add a layer mask, then set up a large soft brush. Dab a few spots around the centre of the black layer to erase the centre of the mask, leaving a vignette style effect. Switch back to Illustrator for a second to select and copy all the elements that make up the logo, then paste and scale them to size to fit the main Photoshop document. Make a duplicate of the logo layer using the shortcut Command and J, or drag the layer over the new icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Reduce the fill amount of the duplicate to zero, making it invisible for the time being. Double click the first logo layer to open up the layer style options. First add a colour overlay using a dark grey such as 313131. Next add a bevel and emboss effect, change the technique to chisel hard, then max out the depth and the size. Alter the shading angle to somewhere in the upper left around 132 degrees and 20 degrees altitude. Change the contour to the preset with the dip in the middle and check the anti-aliased option. Change both the highlights and the shadows modes to overlay, then reduce the highlights opacity to 30. Next add a drop shadow using the settings black, 100% opacity, zero distance and a size that suits your document to create some soft shading. For me 70 pixels worked fine. Click OK on these settings then double click the duplicate layer to add some more styles. Begin with a bevel and emboss but change the shading settings so that the angle is from the upper left. You'll have to turn off the global light setting to avoid also changing the other layer. Change the contour to the spiky preset with the two points, then change the highlights to linear light at 60% and the shadows to linear burn at 20%. Edit the contour option from under the bevel and emboss menu and change the preset to the smooth curve followed by the anti-aliased option. Add a stroke using the settings white, one pixel, inside and overlay with 50% opacity to add a thin little highlight around the edge of the text. Then add some noise to the effect using an inner shadow, set it up with the overlay blending mode using a mid grey, then max out the noise slider at the bottom. Alter the size so that the effect covers the whole letter. Add a satin effect and change the settings to white and overlay, then tweak the distance and size to produce some nice highlights and reflections. I ended up with 20 pixels distance and 68 pixels size. Ok these effects to see the shiny metal effect in action. The key parts are those two bevel and emboss effects. Using the two layers instead of one allows the two different angles and shading settings to interact and create a deeper shine. Open up a rainy window photograph like this one from Unsplash.com. Copy and paste it into the document, then scale it down so it fits over a portion of the text. Hold the ALT key and drag out duplicates to cover all the words and letters. Trim it down to size for the smaller words. For any areas that are too big to cover without leaving a hard edge, use the eraser to blend them together. Select all the copies from within the layers panel and go to layer, merge layers to blend them all into one. Hold the command key while clicking the layer thumbnail of the logo layer to load its selection, then go to select and inverse. Hit the delete key to trim this rainy drops layer to size, then change the blending mode to overlay. Reduce the opacity to around 60%, then add a sharpen filter to bring out the details. 
Now to save some time creating a lens flare from scratch, find a free pack online like this one from PSD Box. Paste it into the document and scale it down to size, then change the blending mode to screen to render the black background transparent. Move the flare into place over one of the letters, then drag out a copy while holding the ALT key. Scale and stretch this duplicate into a slightly different shape and position it elsewhere over the design. Repeat the process with a few more flare copies to add a range of highlights across the artwork, scaling and stretching each one to make it unique. Create a new layer and draw a selection around the smaller words of the logo. Use the eyedropper from the foreground colour picker to select an orangey colour from the lens flare and fill the selection with the alt and backspace shortcut. Load the selection of the logo text layer, inverse it and then delete the excess. Change this layer's blending mode to colour and reduce the opacity to around 50% to give these words a gold appearance. One finishing touch to enhance the St George theme is to add a red cross to the background. Create a new layer above the clouds layer and press command and A to select all. With the marquee tool selected, right click and press transform selection. Hold the alt key and scale it down to a thin column then give it a red fill. Transform the selection again and this time rotate it by 90 degrees and stretch it to fill the width of the document. Fill it with red and change the blending mode to colour, reducing the opacity to around 20% to tone down its impact. The final design captures the style of the Fantastic Beasts movie artwork to produce a fantasy movie title or book cover design of our own. It's interesting to see how the Photoshop's bevel and embossed settings work with those extra bits of type customization we did in Illustrator to create a realistic 3D effect. So I hope you enjoyed this latest video tutorial, if you did be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to be the first to see my upcoming videos. If you want to see more head over to my website at spoon.graphics and join my mailing list to receive plenty of cool design related stuff. Hit me up on Twitter or Facebook if you want to show me your results from this tutorial, otherwise thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.